Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to this 1.1 session. For those of you who join us for the first time, let me give you a little bit of a background. We have started this program way back in May 2020. And as several of us working for One Point Consulting are meditating on a regular basis, one of our friends suggested, why not to set up YouTube recording sessions so you can share your practices and some of your spiritual wisdom with a wider audience? And that was the start of the project. What we have been doing so far is inviting experienced meditators from all over the world and ask them to share their thoughts about a particular topic, but also to guide us into a short meditation. And so far we have more than 100 guest speakers and the sessions have all been recorded and they are available on YouTube. Today I'm very pleased to welcome Stéphane Gubin who joins us from France. Stéphane, hello. hello Stéphane, welcome. Stéphane is currently the owner and partner of the Namaskar Coaching and Learning Center, which is a consulting and training firm based in Grenoble in France. He graduated with an MBA at the Grenoble School of Management, and he has more than 20 years of experience in the field of international business, mainly in management roles. And it was during that time that he also successfully started and ran an overseas branch in Asia. Stefan has been meditating for many, many years, and he uh, runs the meditation center in Grenoble. So I'm very pleased, Stefan, that you can be with us today. And the topic for today is feeling safe in a challenging time. Thank you very much, Els, for this introduction. And again, from the heart also, uh, Thank you uh, to you and, and the team uh, for sustaining this initiative for such a long time, because definitely in today's world, uh, there is a need for uh, more and more meditation, more and more peace. So keep, keep carrying on. Okay, thank you, Stefan. So about today's topic, um, uh, the idea that uh, came to my mind when uh, I was offered to speak about that was... Um, what do we really wish to keep safe? What we really wish to protect in those turbulent times? Of course, I won't go into the list of all the crises that uh, we are facing right now, we as uh, humanity. And uh, I think all of us deep down, although we might have desires, we might have goals to uh, rich in our lives but deep down what we all want is to feel peaceful to feel happy now the question is where is happiness where is peace so for us human beings I think the answer is definitely within and especially within the mind within our mind, the mind which is this very subtle organ, we could say, that is within each of us. And um, the real challenge then, or the real theme for today's uh, talk is how to keep our mind safe in these challenging times. I mean, this is the way I would like to offer you to, to discover this uh, this topic and to engage into this uh, theme. So I've just prepared a few slides, you know, just to illustrate what I would like to offer you as, uh, you know, some, some ideas to go in that direction. And of course, we will finish with some guided uh, meditation. Um, you might have heard of one scientist very famous scientist in the 20th century, or you might have not heard of him, but he had very, very extraordinary, extraordinary ideas. Uh, his name was uh, Nikola Tesla. What he said is that everything is energy and energy is uh, everything. And so the thing is, we are beings of energy. 
we are beings composed of different energies, of course, physical energy, but you could say also emotional energy, mental energy, and we live in a world. So according to these scientists and also, you know, many others nowadays, it's quite, uh, it's quite um, uh, granted uh, and it's quite understood that we, we, we live in a world where we are exposed to various energies. So if we want to keep ourselves safe in these challenging times, and especially if we want to keep our mind safe, we have to understand how those energies interact with one another and how the mind, which in itself is a kind of subtle energy at our disposal, is affected by these energies. So what I would like to propose here is to understand that our mind is like a sponge. It might not be, <laughs> you might not feel or think that it's a nice image, but we have to understand that if we really want to protect our mind and then feel happy and feel peaceful. Our mind is like a sponge that is impacted, that is um, getting signals from many, many directions and we could uh, divide that into, let's say, two main dimensions. First of all, of course, the mind is affected by external factors. So these are, in terms of energies, those energies, I would say, are more gross than other energies that we will explore later on. So, of course, the situations you are in will impact your mind. Am I in a, a safe environment? Am I in a dangerous environment? Or perhaps am I in a safe environment, but there is a part of me that still feel that there might be some danger for some reason or another, or there may be some vibrations around me, you know, vibrations of anger, vibrations of fear, or vibrations of peace. But anyway, whatever these are, the mind will absorb that and I will be affected by that. Other type of gross energy, the company uh, you, you keep. So am I most of the time with people who are mostly positive, you know, about themselves, about the others, about life, or am I with people who most of the time talk negatively about life, about others, you know, they point uh, the defects of other people, or what should be done, what could be done, and what is not done, and they complain. They are in the state of victimization, perhaps about themselves or the group of people they belong to. At the end of the day, if I keep such a company for too long, that will definitely affect my mind. And I might, you know, really, really lose some energy, unless, of course, I take care of myself, which we will see afterwards. Less well-known factor is the food and drinks you intake. So here, my experience, you know, of going to, to India for many years now, for the last 30 years, in fact, going there almost every year. And um, it, it is there that I have understood that definitely the type of food I eat will have an impact on my mind. And there are some types of food that will really have a negative impact on the mind, will make me, you know, feel heavy, not only the body heavy, but also the mind heavy, you know, they call that type of food, tamasic food. So really those type of foods will keep me away from the best part of the self, the most elevated part of the self. That's what they call tamasic food. So you can uh, look for that word, you know, on the internet. On the contrary, you have sattvic food, sattvic food, they are the types of food that will take you closer 
to your fullest potential. So potential of peace, potential of happiness. And in between, you have rajasic food. So I won't go too much into the details um, about, um, about that. But let us be informed, you know. So you have this ancient wisdom, mostly coming from the East, telling us that, but now it is also confirmed by brand new science, you know, especially brand new science, which study the connections uh, between the brain and the other organs. And nowadays we know that especially, you know, what they call the micro microbiotis, which is um, in the intestines, you know, in, in, in the digestive area will have uh, a tremendous impact. Someone who has a weakened microbiotis then uh, can become depressed. So just because, you know, the food, the digestive power is not that good. So especially in those days, let me be more careful to the type of food I eat, the, how I eat it also, how I prepare it. Let me try to reduce, even if it's very practical, of course, frozen food and, and um, industrialized food. Let me try to focus on organic foods and so forth. And let me eat peacefully. Let me not, uh, when I eat, you know, look at uh, the, the news media is talking about such uh, war or such catastrophe because they usually focus on that. Other external factor, in fact, so it's everything, you know, we have those um, five sense organs and everything that those sense organs are exposed to, definitely, of course, uh, those signals, those information, they will go through those anger uh, or sense organs, they will be then um, in a way translated into electrical signal that we go to the brain then from the brain to the subtle consciousness, of course. So that will have an impact. So I could decide, you know, for instance, to reduce, for instance, uh, the duration of time that I spend on TV or on the, uh, on the media, you know, connected to all the bad news from, from the world so that I can keep my mind safe. Now, the more subtle factors, so these energies are more subtle and they still, of course, impact the mind. So, of course, our thoughts, our emotions, feelings and moods, and, of course, our memories and our personal history. So it's very, I think, well known and we can all understand that in the same situation, 10 people, you know, they might hear uh, perhaps an accident uh, in, um, in the street, in the corner, and uh, they will have 10 different reactions because in their mind, in, in the mind of each individual, because at this very moment where this event is happening, because of the personal life stories, because the moods they are at this moment, because those some people, they might be cold, some people, they, they might feel um, normal temperatures, some people, they might feel, you know, too hot. That will affect their awareness and that, that will affect, the, in fact, the interpretation of the mind. So at each second, each moment, Every one of us, you know, we interpret what uh, we are experiencing. So we don't have access to bare reality. We all the time, you know, have those many filters that will uh, induce us to see the situation from one angle and some other people from one angle. So this is very fascinating, you know, again, Ancient traditions, they used to tell us that, but now it is really much uh, confirmed, especially by uh, neurosciences. So basically, you understand that if you want to feel safe in challenging times, you would have to pay attention to all those factors. Uh, and here, I would like to focus just on three uh, main ways of really feeling safer especially you know 
suppose that okay right now you know you have all those crises piling up but suppose that more crises come so really really i urge you pay more attention so first of all to those factors and if you want really to focus you know to be more efficient this is a, a leadership principle you know the best leaders they focus on the fewest things that make the biggest difference so i will offer you three main ways for taking care of your mind and for feeling safer uh, so internally so some ways to protect your mind so three main ways to protect your mind because as we have seen this is the this is the issue first way is learn the art of being the detached observer of yourself and of life itself we are extraordinary beings so of course nature is extraordinary animals are extraordinary all the creatures on earth are extraordinary, you know, and the way they interact uh, with one another and all these different levels of energy. But we have to recon that most likely, most likely, we are the only beings being able to act. And at the same time, we can observe ourselves acting. So right now I'm talking to you through this uh, little lens that we call camera. Um, unfortunately, I don't see you, but you can see me. And you can uh, see me and observe yourself seeing uh, me as I can observe myself also talking to you. I can observe also my thoughts. I can observe my feelings. So this is really a magical dimension that we have to learn to enhance we have to learn to grow that art that yes let me be engaged in uh, what we could call the field of action let me act i'm not here to withdraw in a cave i'm not here to withdraw in a monastery no okay let me be engaged with my fellow human beings but at the same time let me learn to be detached from my own thoughts, my own ideas, my own words, my own feelings and emotions to a good extent. I don't know if you would agree with that, but I think that one of the main source of human suffering, and we can see this specifically nowadays uh, in the year 2023 is this identification this attachment so attachment would be the word that they use more uh, in the east but otherwise in the west we could say identification to a certain tribe to a certain community to a um, certain subgroup and even of course identification to the body Okay, if I'm very proud of my body or so, and I look at myself in the mirror, as long as I'm young, and uh, for instance, for us uh, men, perhaps we want to have uh, muscles, and I, we, I look in the mirror, I'm happy because I have a lot of muscles. But then, of course, when I grow old, when the body grows old, what will happen? I see the gray hair, I see the, the wrinkles and uh, everything that goes on, you know, the body does not function as well, usually <laughs> at uh, 70 or 80 than at uh, 20. And also, you know, identification uh, to being poor, to being rich. Um, you have the young, you have the old, all those conversations about being women, women, uh, men also. Of course, all those labels, they do exist. But when we attach, when we identify ourselves too much to those labels, then we fight with the others who, whom we see having different labels. So let me learn to be detached. I have a wonderful experience, uh, not that... Uh, long ago when I was really stressed, you know, especially because of work and I didn't pay enough attention to my mind. So this feeling of stress was here. And I sat down for meditation in the evening. And in a way, it's like I could 
see Stefan is stressed. Yeah, Stefan is stressed, but the detached observer part of myself was really peaceful and could observe Stefan being distressed, sorry, distressed and stressed, and in fact, send peace to Stefan. And then, yes, at the end of the meditation, a 30 minutes meditation, I could feel globally that uh, all those dimensions of me were uh, peaceful. So that was really beautiful experience. And uh, of course, I tried to reproduce that. That, you know, requires some, uh, some, some focus, some attention, but uh, it's, um, it's feasible. So <clears throat> second part is learn the art of positive thinking and feeling. So I won't go too much into the detail about that, but still perhaps uh, to remind ourselves that we human beings, we are supposed to function positively. Our body is supposed to function according to positive thoughts, positive emotions and feelings. Again, the ancient traditions, they used to tell us that. And even some philosophers, you know, uh, there is a French philosopher. I don't know if he he's famous uh, outside of France, but he lived in the 18th century. His name is Voltaire. And a very beautiful sentence he said once is, I have decided to be happy because I know that being happy is good for my health. So he had this intuition, but now it's confirmed 150% by science again. Huh? Um, when someone is optimistic, when someone manages to see the silver lining, uh, the, the, pro, the proverbial silver lining, you know, when there are a lot of cl clouds, then of course, the body of that person will function better, especially, for instance, the immune system of that person will function better, but of course, the mind. So the more I can feed my mind with positive thoughts and feelings, the better. So just as a quick reminder, uh, it can be very interesting, can be very powerful for all, you know, all those of you who want to really uh, go deeper into self-development to try every day to see what type of thoughts you produce. Negative thinking and feelings about the self, about others, about life. But you have also waste thinking and waste feelings. So these are feelings, okay, it's not as bad as producing uh, negative thoughts about the self. Okay, I'm worthless, and these people also they they are no good to uh, to anything. But waste thinking also will really drain your energy little by little, and you don't notice it. Oh, I wish today was sunny. Oh, I wish my husband was like that. My children, useless thoughts, waste thoughts. They drain also our energy, and of course they will go with waste feelings. Ordinary thinking and feelings, they are not bad. Uh, they are ordinary, but, you know, some models, they tell us that we produce between 60,000 to 70,000 thoughts per day. Some other models tell us it's uh, less than that. But suppose whatever, uh, you know, the model you, you are connected with, if 90% of your thoughts are ordinary, then of course your life will feel ordinary. And perhaps the degree of protection again of your mind will not be that high. So you have really to aim at creating positive feelings and thinkings about yourself, but also about others. You know, we are so good at criticizing others, pointing at their defects. Perhaps it's a national sport, especially in France, but maybe also in other countries. And so um, I would have, I should increase the percentage of thoughts and feeling that I create, you know, that are positive. But the best, the best, the most powerful thoughts are related to what we could call elevated thinking and feeling. These thinking and feelings, they are connected to the true self. 
So the true self is what we will explore in the meditation. But again, most of the ancient traditions, and again now, new science tell us we are beings of positivity. At the core of the self is positivity, is peace. Our body is made to function along that energy of positivity, of optimism, and the mind also. So elevated thinking, we will explore during the, the meditation. So we've seen two ways already. And the third way, of course, well, practice meditation very regularly. And uh, meditation, you know, is not only about feeling peace. That's already beautiful if you can <laughs> manage that. But meditation is about knowing the self knowing how the mind functions, how, again, the mind is influenced by all those different factors that we have seen, reducing the influence of negative factors, enhancing the influence of positive factors. And of course, of course, for some factors, and I guess especially the external factors, there are many things that you won't be able to change and you cannot change the pollution. You have the air pollution, you have the environmental pollution, you have the food pollution, you have the water pollution. So many types of pollutions that might be difficult to reduce, okay? But definitely for the inner, more subtle factors. So your own thoughts, you are the one who create your thoughts. You are the one who creates your emotions and feelings. You are the ones who create your moods at the end of the day. The thing is to be more aware of that. I have to become more aware that at some point in the day, I have shifted to the negative. I have shifted to the waste. Let me not stay there. Let me go back. I am the one who creates my thoughts. So that's where the art of observing the self and being a detached observer, not feeling guilty. You know, suppose I get angry, I lose my temper. I start to argue with someone, uh, but quite negatively. Okay, then it's finished. Of course, let me apologize if that's the case. And then, of course, uh, let me not lash myself. You know, okay, that happened. Next time, I'll do better. Next time, I'll prepare myself for uh, a conversation that can be difficult. So if you learn those arts, you know, being a detached observer, the art of producing positive thoughts and feelings, not only will you help yourself, but you might help other people. And nowadays, and I will conclude on that before the meditation, nowadays, we know also, of course, ancient wisdom, they told us that already, but we know that we human beings, so this association of uh, consciousness and the physical body, we produce all the time, you know, vibrations, radiations. That's exactly what Nikola Tesla told us, you know, everything is about energy. Everything is about vibrations. For instance, our heart produces a very big magnetic field. Now we can measure that. Our brain, a very big also electromagnetical magnetic field, and so on, all the organs. And so I feel happy. I will radiate this happiness towards the world. I feel peace. I will radiate that. There is harmony within me then I will radiate that. There is war within me. Then I will contribute to the wars that are outside. So let us practice some meditation. Uh, I will have to launch some music if you bear with me. And then I will show some image. Music is not compulsory when you want to meditate, but it does help. So why not playing some nice music? So try to be as straight as possible, you know, and try to avoid any sensation of tension. Breathe normally. Maybe you want to activate, you know, the 
part of the nervous system that slows down so you can exhale longer than you inhale. Uh, I, I inhale, for instance, for three, four seconds and exhale for five or six seconds. And so I hope you will hear the sound. And because everything starts with a point and everything ends with a point, I'm showing you this point because it's easy then to focus. So breathing gently, putting my body to rest. I withdraw, I go within, like the turtle goes within. And I remember that I am the one who creates thoughts, who creates feelings, who creates moods. So now for this meditation, I wish to feel more peace, to feel more happiness. I tell to my mind to reduce the speed of thoughts Hey, my mind, please slow down. There is no need to think right now. Nothing to do. Hey, my mind, please cooperate with me. If my mind still is mischievous and produces some thoughts that are not connected, the meditation I just let those thoughts go through the sky you know like birds I won't hold to those birds and I come back I am this point of energy this point of consciousness that produces those thoughts those feelings and because the pace of thoughts is reduced, now I choose positive thoughts, I choose elevated thoughts. For instance, I am a being of peace. I am a being of tranquility. My very nature is peace, is tranquility. This is my true spiritual DNA. I am happy to feel that. I am happy to share that. I am happy to radiate that. right now I become again what I am in the silence I become a human being being of peace being of light
silence heals me. Silence protects me. Silence gives me energy. Energy to face every obstacle that life will throw at me, every challenge. I feel confident, I feel positive, I feel peaceful, I feel loving. And so now I am ready to again connect my awareness to the external world. So gently, if I had closed my eyes, I can open my eyes and reconnect with the external world. So thank you so much for having taken the time to engage with me on this journey and meditation. I hope that you found some benefit uh, and I uh, wish you really the very best to keep your mind, your heart safe in those challenging times. Indeed. À bientôt. Thank you, Stefan, uh, for this beautiful session. Also, the meditation was very beautiful, the silence. And what I have taken from your session is that how to keep the mind safe in these challenging times is to understand all the influences that affect our mind, like external influences, internal influences. So thanks for clarifying that. And then also to summarize the words of Nikola Tesla, everything is energy, energy is everything. So very beautiful. Thank you so much, Stefan. Thanks to the technical team, uh, always there to support us behind the scenes. And so those who joined us, I hope you have enjoyed the session and have a very nice day. Bye-bye.